I think what's unique about the Virgin Islands is that because of its location, it has had an impact on the world. For a place so small and being a crossroads, it fertilized a human experience that most don't understand. But if you begin to take the time to understand the history, then you can make sense of why a population of under 100,000 and three tiny dots on the map could have such a significant uh, importance and contribution to world history. The Virgin Islands has stood the test of time since nearly the beginning of time, filling our hearts and minds with stories of mermaids, pirates, and buried treasure. But on the islands, the most valued treasure is not found buried under an X in the sand. It's infused in the very hearts and minds of its people. We are tourism destination. So the visitors that come here, they have vacation. But for us, it's work. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we work every day in the from the taxi drivers to the support industries to the cooks and the mechanics and everything that makes it all go. You know what I mean? That that's our economy. You know what I mean? It's, it's a it's a it's a tourism based economy, a service economy, and we kinda adapt to that. We've been adapting to each other from back in colonial slavery days. We all came either from West Africa or China or someplace. East Western Europe. So we all got together and we we've had a couple hundred years to practice. We try here to preserve the heritage, the French heritage here in the islands. Basically we build and maintain this museum specifically for that. The history here of the French in, in the Virgin Islands came from the fact that they migrated here in the late 1800s from the other French islands, mainly Martinique, Guadeloupe, the French side of St. Martin. Of course, they originally came from France, but because of economical reasons and jobs, and so they came to the US, to the, to the Virgin Islands. Most of them came as fishermen, and on the north side where there was a little more uh, vegetation and, and, and better weather, the, the, the people up there were farmers. That's on the north side of the island. Over here, they were um, fishermen, and they still exist. They, they, they provided the islands with all, most of the fish that people use for consumption in the hotels and restaurants. The fisherman goes out at dawn when everyone's abed, and from the bottom of the sea draws up his daily bread. His life is strange, half on the shore and half upon the sea. Not quite a fish, and yet not quite the same as you and me. The Fisherman by Abby Farewell Brown. Most of our you know, grandparents and parents were, you know, before tourism was, you know, took over the island, that, that, that's a, what is now a bread and butter. A fisherman farming was a, was a thing, you know, back in the, in the 70s and all that, until tourism started. So if you weren't a fisherman, you were a farmer. And there was this, so that's how the heritage, you know, move, you know, keeps on going. But some people stuck with it, and uh, I'm one of them, and I, I, I love it, you know, nothing, not a dull moment out there in the ocean. Our culture down here is pretty much based on a generation to generation culture, and I am a four generation fisherman. I've been fishing commercially for about 30 years, and, um, it's, it's quite an experience, but it, it's an experience that comes with the love and joy to keep our heritage and culture alive. The French fishermen of the islands continue to make an impact, both culturally and economically. But they are not alone in cementing the very fabric that keeps this island alive. A stone throw from the sea, farmers work the markets of downtown St. Thomas. Farming from my youth. 
I was raised on a farm in Dominica. Ah, very cool. The island of Dominica, the Commonwealth of Dominica. And this is between the two French countries, Martinique and Guadeloupe. Dominica is between them. And that's where, when I came here, I migrated. I started farming also. I continue farming from Dominica. And it's my lifestyle. I love it. And I try to encourage others, especially the school children, those that are interested. I opened my farm to them. I have had several visits. I believe because most of our parents didn't have an education and, and they've always instilled in us that we need to go to school and have an education. I remember my mother's favorite words that you need to come home with the paper. She was important that we come home with a piece of paper, which is our diploma. So she's always instilled that education is the number one priority. The Jews came here from St. Eustatius because of the sacking of St. Eustatius in 1781 um, by Rodney because St. Eustatius supported the United States uh, independence and supplied arms. There are some features of island life that I treasure. There's been, in terms of different kinds of groups and people coming together, uh, there's been no significant history of anti-Semitism here for all of the 220 plus years uh, that this synagogue is here. You know we are the oldest synagogue building in continuous use under the U.S. flag, the second oldest uh, synagogue uh, building in the Western Hemisphere, and one of five synagogues in the world to have sand on the floor. Uh, but what is most powerful to me, um, if you go anywhere on the island uh, and you talk about or ask about us, um, people will say uh, the phrase, our synagogue, with pride, whatever religious background they're, they're from. There's a sense of connection here, of pride about this uh, historic place. You must understand that so, from suffering, people can relate to the plight of others, and that likewise acts of self-determination and to be recognized as a human being, not based on the color of your skin, and that our bloodlines and our family lines are all one of where we've through forced migration and exploitation, we are who we are, and that we accept each other for the humanity. Everybody's trying to figure out what's the right way to live, what's the right way, what's the wrong way. And it's not that, it's you need to learn as many ways as possible. Every way is a language. Speak as many languages that you possibly can, languages that bring you peace. You're a multifaceted person. And the island brings out a facet that most people have never seen before. That's why it's magical. One thing I noticed, that's why it's the title of this documentary too, is it's Good Morning, Good Morning. Right. Um, Sometimes the most simplistic thing can be the, the you know, bridge to people learning to adapt and connect right. and respect each other. Because right. we're in the Americas, there's, there's such an issue right now with people's perception of immigration, whether right. it's one side or the other. Right. It seems like here, and I've learned this from a lot of people who came here, like expats, et cetera, but they talk, when they talk about the West Indies people, they say, good morning, good morning. It's that element of respect. What, right. what does good morning, good morning mean to you? Good morning, good morning is respect and friendship. And when we enter a room or a new situation, we say good morning to the environment in general, then we say good morning to each other individually. Number one is part of our West Indian culture. And it's good manners. We grew up from a child. We say good morning to anyone we meet on the street, whether it's a man, woman, child, elderly. We always say good morning because it's, it's, it's manners. Our, t our parents always taught us. And it's like a blessing. It brings a blessing. Yeah. yeah. I will encourage everyone to do it. Sometimes so you meet some of them that do it. And if you tell it to them, they wouldn't even answer. Sometimes I have to say it three times, good morning, good morning. And then when they pick it up, and they are so taken up in the phone and other things that they don't even hear it. But we want to keep pressing it to our children. We don't want them to lose it. I would go to the States and it's just a custom. And I would say, I walk into a store, I say good morning. Everybody's like, they don't answer. But in our culture, it, it's a greeting that gets you started. and. 
it keeps it open and friendly and you know it carries you a long way in life this is not a story about politics or a hurricane this is a story about culture and love this is the virgin islands tell me have you wondered i had a need to know if there was such a place where love still shows but down in the islands friends and families are getting together sharing forever there's one lover one heart or one community welcome to the island welcome to the islands welcome to the island welcome to the island Welcome to the islands, yeah, yeah, yeah.